So you understand more as I go this morning, but I'm going to touch on a subject that I believe that we've all dealt with this, this morning, maybe some are dealing with, or maybe this is something that you're going to put in your backpack, and you're going to have to use this uh, a little bit later. But in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 6, I'm going to be looking, Matthew 6, verse number 14, in verse number 15, amen. I feel like it's kind of a teach, preach type message this morning, where I'm going to more preach on Sunday morning, but I feel like I want to give us some good ammunition, amen, for our Christian walk. Amen. The Word of God says, for if you forgive men, amen, I'm talking about forgiveness that's ordained in heaven, you got, forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Amen. So there is an obligation for us this morning as believers to forgive. Amen. And uh, I'm not saying that that is an easy thing. I'm saying it is a necessary thing this morning. And uh, I want to talk about for a few moments the pain of unforgiveness. And so forgiveness in our life is both something that we give, but it is also something that we need to receive. Amen? Amen. 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 We need to receive it. And don't say that you don't need to receive it because hey, you need to have a little talk with Jesus if you think you don't. Amen? Because we all need forgiveness, but we all have uh, the need to forgive as well. I believe that forgiveness probably does this to us, it brings our, our life to a, a, a back to a state of being normal again. Would you agree? If you've ever struggled with forgiveness, uh, uh, and I'm sure that we all have, amen, forgiving, that forgiveness brings our life back to a place of normalcy. And uh, uh, many times forgiveness, uh, uh, when it, 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 it isn't granted, at least to us, it really brings to us some pain of unforgiveness. Amen. We think that we can be, uh, be vindicted to someone else and cause them pain by not forgiving. But we can also experience that pain of unforgiveness when someone doesn't grant us mercy and grace as well. It's not a good place to be in. And so we all have the choice of forgiveness in our life. Uh, the choice of forgiveness uh, when we uh, uh, are petitioned by a person to forgive or when we have been injured and uh, the offense has been against us that we exercise the right to forgive someone else. And so we all have a choice in forgiveness. And sometimes it can be one of the hardest choices that we ever make in our life to be able to forgive. It can be a big and a hard choice. But Christ makes it easy. The Word of God gives us instruction. Amen. How many of you have ever bought something before? You know, I'll, 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 I'll tell you that I'm very bad about sometimes just grabbing the instructions or the reading. I just grab all the parts and want to put it together. 
Maybe you're like that. Thank God for my wife. She is a reader and gets instructions. And so she's taught me a lot. And so when, 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 when it's time to put something together, well, it's teamwork time. And so she's reading and I'm putting together and it all it goes much, much better. And so sometimes we think that we can live life the way that we want to do it without reading the instructions of how it should be done. And so this morning, uh, whether I, I, maybe I can be like my wife is to me, and I can give you the manual and tell you what you need to do and what I need to do to be able to exercise uh, uh, forgiveness. Forgiveness is easy sometimes. Forgiveness is uneasy at times. I think it has to do with uh, 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 how grievous the offense is, number one. And, and number two, I think it is, what is the relationship between us and the, and the one who, who has offended us? Sometimes I can affect the magnitude of it. And, and then uh, we, we, we think, are they really sincere when they ask for forgiveness? That can play a part in it as well. And uh, 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 we may also think, well, what does the person who's asking for forgiveness, how are they on a biblical perspective? How are they? I think that we can look at all those things. But I think one thing that we look at in the natural sense is that we like the idea of relinquishing a right for retaliation. Amen? Anybody ever been there? Wait, I have a right to retaliate. I have a right to get back. And I, 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 I need to tell you uh, that, that, that sometimes we think this, that, that I need that right. But I want to tell you that when we relinquish our rights to God and we place it in the hands of God, it gives us the place to start healing. How many of you like healing? Amen. You know, you cut yourself. Aren't you glad when that begins to mend up and begins to heal? Uh, Brother Wally and Sister Beth was telling me this morning that, that uh, uh, the, the news gives what's happening in the local uh, hospitals. And, and they said that, that uh, the, the flu is now off of uh, the forefront of what's happening in, in, in hospital world throughout the past. Aren't you glad for that? There's healing in society. We are behind flu season. Now, I know that we're just embracing the GI bug season, uh, but, but uh, here come the beginning of summer, that will be behind us. But aren't you glad when healing happens and occurs, and when we relinquish all rights of retaliation to God, that is when healing really, really occurs. You know, we look at the Old Testament model, and the Old Testament said an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. But I want to tell you in the New Testament, it's not that way. Amen. We are living in the wonderful, wonderful dispensation of grace. And the cross cries out, there is grace and there is mercy and there is forgiveness. Thank God for grace this morning. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for forgiveness. Some people nurture grudges. Some people nurture things that happened 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Let me tell you, it's time to allow grace to be a part of your life in every area. Amen. And I wonder when you say, but I haven't been able to forgive. Have you allowed the grace of God to get in every nook and every cranny and every area of your heart? Because if God has given us grace and forgiveness, we've got to give grace and forgiveness and mercy to everybody else. Thank God for grace. So we looked at here in Matthew chapter number 6. The Word of God is explicit in telling us that if we don't forgive men for their trespasses against us, then we don't get the forgiveness of God against us. Wow, that's huge this morning. We love to talk about grace. We love to talk about mercy. We love to talk about the things that God has done for us. But we have to realize to have that executed in our life, there is a requirement that we have to forgive others of the offenses that they have committed against us. 
You see, in Matthew chapter number 18, I love this. In Matthew chapter number 18, in verse number 21, here's Peter and he's talking to Jesus. And the Bible says, and Then came Peter unto him, Jesus, and he said unto him, Lord, how often shall, uh, 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 often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. And he says, Till seven times. So here's Peter, and he comes to Jesus, and he says, listen, my brother's offended me. He's done wrong against me. How often should I forgive him? And he uses this magical number of seven. We find that a lot in the Bible, don't we? It means completeness. It means wholeness. Uh, the seven days that God created. I mean, we look at that number, and, and, and it's just complete. It's everything. And so really, when you look at this, commentators tell us that in Jewish tradition, it was that if someone offended, you, Sister Dot, if you offended me, I only had the right to forgive you three times in one day. And so, Brother Josh, here it is. Peter says, I'm going to take the higher road and I'm going to talk to Jesus and I'm going to double it and I'm going to give it one more. I've got to be right. And Jesus said, Oh, no, Peter. He said to him, He said, I, I, I need to tell you that, that, that. Not seven times, but 70 times seven. You think that there's a certain completeness to how much you're to forgive someone when they offend you? Jesus said no, and He gives them this multiplication table. And you know what He was saying? He wasn't looking at a specific number, but He was saying this, would you stop keeping track of the offenses of other people against you? And would you just forgive them? It's required of you to forgive because God has forgiven you. You know, it's not time to keep trying. Some people like to be offended. Some people like to be hurt. You know what? That's not a Christ-like spirit. And so we've got to say, I'm not keeping track of offenses. But I'm forgiven. Because I've been forgiven. You see, God's formulas don't keep track of it. Let me ask you a question this morning. Has anyone ever felt, don't raise your hand, I don't want to know, but I'm asking you, has anyone ever felt the pain of someone not forgiving you? You were sincere. You asked for forgiveness. But there was nothing relinquished. And you felt the pain of that. Who are we to relinquish pain on anyone? by exercising unforgiveness. And so there's pain of unforgiveness this morning. I once felt the pain of offense and wrong and done that I had done, Sister Jan. But one day, amen, even though it may not have been great, one day, I met Jesus. And Jesus said to me, I take away that shame and I take away that guilt and I give you forgiveness. And the pain is all gone. Amen. He gave me the ability to live life in a very normal way with enjoying everything about it. Listen, I need to tell you, sometimes every relationship won't be the same. Amen. Because of, of forgiveness and because of things that's happened. Hey, I'm not asking if you know someone's going to do you wrong again. Don't go back to being their bosom buddy. Hey, but you do have an obligation to forgive them even if the status of the relationship changes. Changes, we still have a responsibility. I found this very interesting that uh, uh, there is a physical cost as well of, of, of folks that will not forgive. This is from a book uh, of a man who had studied that of cancer patients. And so Dr. Michael Berry, uh, the, the author of the book, The, the, the Forgiveness Project, he took and he, 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 he did a statistical study with cancer patients. And as these people that had cancer, he began to ask them questions. And part of the questions that he asked them was about forgiveness. And he, he found that 60% of those patients that had cancer, they were suffering from the pain of not forgiving someone. And 
50% of that 60% was a very severe offense as he terms it. Can I tell you that unforgiveness not only affects us spiritually, but it affects us physically? Amen. God help us to grant to others that same grace and mercy that God has granted us. If you read on down in chapter number 18 here in Matthew, as Jesus begins to talk to Peter about unforgiveness, he talks about a man that he, he, he owes to his master, and he doesn't have the ability to pay back to his master. And so his master is going to punish him. But he falls down and he worships him, and he asks for forgiveness, and he begs for mercy. And his master says, I forgive your debt. How amazing. Uh, that's just like you and I with Christ. Uh, there's nothing that I could have done to repay the sin debt that I owe. I deserve to suffer. I deserve to die. I deserve not to have a relationship with God the Father. But one day my master, Jesus Christ, stepped on the scene and he said to me, he said, I forgive you all your offenses. Go and sin no more. The Bible says that Jesus used the illustration, not the one who had been forgiven of his great uh, 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 amount of debt. Now he had someone who owed him, and that person said to him, would you forgive me? He said, no, I won't forgive you. You're going to jail. You're going to punishment. Wow. That's exactly what we are like. When we don't offer folks forgiveness, for the offenses against us. Who are we not to forgive? Because we have greatly been forgiven. The Bible says that when, 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 when the, the master of the one who wouldn't forgive found out. That he wiped away all of his grace and mercy and forgiveness. If we want to experience the grace of and the mercy of God. Amen. There's a requirement that we give grace and mercy the same way Christ has given it to us. Those grudges that we've been nursing for all those years, they've got to be let go of. People who's been offended because of family situations that we don't even remember that generation or know anything about or things that we've heard or we've seen. Let me just throw this out loud here. If someone's offended you and you have colleagues and you have a community that comes by and nurses you to be with that attitude, an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, you need to find a new set of friends. Amen. They shouldn't be nursing grudges. They shouldn't be nursing anxiety. They shouldn't be nursing unforgiveness. But as believers, we have to remind ourselves and others that God has forgiven us. And so we have a responsibility to forgive others. I find this so amazing. In Luke chapter number 12, uh, 24, uh, we find that Jesus on the road to Emmaus, He's walking and He's talking with His disciples. And they don't recognize him. And so as, as they don't recognize him. Let me get to my notes here. We find that as he's there with them. And they're walking and talking. You, you know Sister Rachel. There's, there's a moment of embarrassment. When they find out that it's Christ. But I just ran from him in the passion. I just ran from him as he died. Well, I said I would be loyal. But I wasn't loyal. There was an abandoning or walking away from Christ. But we see that Jesus, He says, listen, I rid you of that shame and embarrassment if you will reconcile to me. He said, don't you remember? There at the Last Supper, He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This is my blood, which is shed for you. So that abandonment that you had of me, I need to tell you that I'm here to rid you of that abandonment 
and rid you of that guilt and rid you of that shame. Way back in the Garden of Eden, it started where when man abandoned God, there was that sense of guilt, there was that sense of shame. But I want to tell you that God executed the greatest forgiveness upon the cross of Calvary when He said, I forgive you. Amen. Let's bury your shame. Let's bury your guilt. And let's reconcile. Can I tell you that if there's anything in your life that has arose, maybe something or someone who has become more important than your walk with Jesus Christ, I want you to know this morning that He wants reconciliation with you. He wants to bury that guilt. He wants to bury that shame. Amen. It was His body that was broken that we may know wholeness. I love right. Jesus said, thus it is written that he would die in Luke 24 and he would rise again on the third, third day. That repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Do you know why he died on the cross? Because He wants the message of forgiveness to be preached. The message that He loves us, whatever our offense is, He's greater than that. He forgives sin. Amen. Our natural uh, reaction uh, when, 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 we, when we sin, uh, you know, we, we, we want to run and we want to hide. God says, don't run and don't hide from me. I've already purchased your forgiveness. I am the sacrament of reconciliation. You see, when we take that weight for a communion and we take that cup in communion, do you know what Christ is saying for us? These sacraments are sacraments of forgiveness. How powerful is that? That He forgives our sins. And, and, and when I say forgive, forgive sins, Christ forgives the sin of the man and the woman who repents of their sin, not because they're sorry they're caught up in it, but they're sorry and they want to change because we become a new creation in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you love when you see when God gets in a life and He changes a life? Well, I remember when they were a drunkard. I remember when they were nothing but trouble. I remember when, when they were the talk of the town. Oh, but when Jesus gets in, amen, He says, that's all God. It's forgiven. I wash it away. Their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life because they sincerely repented and they changed from their ways and now they live in Me. Amen. Talk about the power of forgiveness. Amen. I'm talking about forgiveness this morning. Why can I forgive? Because Christ has forgiven me. I'm not who I used to be. Amen. Nor am I who I want to be. But I am where I am today because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Letting go. Jesus cried on the cross, Father, forgive them. See, what was Jesus doing? Because Jesus came as a baby in a manger. And for 33 and a half years, He modeled holiness and righteousness. He modeled how we should live. He modeled how we should die. And even in His death, He modeled the importance of forgiveness. God, forgive them. I told you when He came to His disciples, that guilt, that shame, that abandonment. But what did He show them? We often wonder, why did Jesus keep the scars in His hands and His feet? Why was that in His sides for Susan when He had the glorified body? We know us and our glorified body, Brother Dennis, but we're not going to have scars. We're, 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 we're going to look just completely different. You know why He did it? Because he came to a group of people who chose other things over him and being faithful with him to the end. And in the middle of their guilt, when they said, I should have suffered because of this. I should be punished because of this. He looks and he says, here's the suffering and here's the punishment. When God the Father looks at them and sees their unrighteousness, but he stands between and he says, Father, I pray. 
righteousness for them. This one is with me. Hallelujah, Sister Jim. This one's with me. Look at my scars. This one is with me. See, one person said there's two different flavors of mercy. You know, mercy can be that, you know, go look out with me, your dog don't have a soul. But you look at your dog and you see he's not going to get any better, so you euthanize him because you're merciful you don't want to see him in that situation. But the second flavor of mercy is this. Is Jesus showed mercy. When they spit upon him, when they hung him on a cross, when they spoke all manner of evil against them, even in the heat of battle, he showed mercy. Mercy isn't what just works good for us or our emotions are moved. But mercy is even when in the heat of the battle, we say, because he forgave me. I don't know this morning, Mr. Holly, you're coming to the piano. I don't know this morning if I've been able to relate to you the power of forgiveness. But it is so powerful. When we think that we should have hid in shame, but Christ went to a cross and said, Father, forgive them. We've been like the disciples many times. We put other things, other people in front of God. You know what God says? But I'm here to offer mercy and forgiveness and bring reconciliation. Maybe in the sanctuary, maybe that's you. Maybe you'll look at your life and maybe you'll say, I have kind of got my priorities out of order, Brother Seville. I haven't kept Christ as sent. I need to tell you that there are some nails on hands that says, I am punishment. I give mercy and grace. Some of you need mercy and grace over things that you did years ago in your life that you can't get the victory over. The battle is real. It's a battle of the mind. It's a battle it, it, it affects you spiritually and physically. But it's time for you to say, God, I don't need punishment for that. What I need is a sincere heart that asks for forgiveness. And I need to accept your mercy and grace. Some of you, maybe you've struggled with offense. You've been offended. You've been hurt. The relationship was close. The hurt, the offense was great. I have to tell you that how great it is, and I know the natural man who wants vindication and retaliation. But God says, if you want to experience my mercy and my grace, you have to give it to those who trespass against you. I'm telling you this morning, if you can sink your teeth into this, it will be a world of freedom. It will be growth spiritually for you. The week of his passion and his suffering, he suffered for every offense of man that he may bring reconciliation to them with God the Father. He suffered that you don't have to. Responsibility is to ask for forgiveness and to give forgiveness. Only you know your story, only you know where you're at, but God knows too. So this morning, would you bring your story to the cross, the place of forgiveness? Would you allow forgiveness to wash over you? And would you leave this place? forgiving others with the same forgiveness that you found with God.
there's a place to kneel at the cross. Would you come this morning? Would you come this morning, everyone? Would you kneel at the cross? That place of our goodness. Amen. That place of freedom. That place of our life. That place where life can be lived in a normal way. Amen. Beneath the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's get it.